Hello students, in this video I am redoing the problem of Navy's algorithm for continuous attribute. Since there were a lot of questions in regarding to the calculations and some test data, I am redoing and verifying all your doubts. So the question remains the same. I have not altered the question. Assess the student's performance using Navy's algorithm for continuous attribute. Predict whether the student gets the job offer or not. The training data set T consists of 10 data instances with two attributes are given there cgpa and interactiveness the target variable is job offer which is classified as yes or no so here there were some questions students were asking what if the test data is not given uh, see in the question paper they should give you the test data they can give the questions like this let the test data be cgpa 8.5 and interactiveness yes or they can ask predict whether the student with CGPA 8.5 and interactiveness yes will get the job offer or not. So they should ask the question like this. Suppose by chance the question paper it's not asked, please assume take a value and solve the problem, don't leave the question. Now let's start the problem. So this is the training data set which is given. We have 10 data instances, 2 attributes CGPA and interactiveness. We have to finally, this is the target class, job offer. Now, CGPA, we uh, see that it's a what it's a continuous value, whereas interactiveness is a discrete value. So, let's first do for, uh, start the problem. Step 1, find the prior probability for the target feature job offer. So, first make a table, okay. The first column is job offer classes, right. What are the classes in your job offer, yes and no. The second column is number of instances. The third column is probability value. Number of instances, how many yes you have here? If you count, I have seven yes and three no's. So right here, yes is seven, no is three. The third column is probability that job offer is equal to yes is seven divided by 10. Why seven? Because seven is the number of uh, instances of yes and 10 is the total number of instances. Similarly, probability of job offer no is three by 10. So that is a step one. Now step two, find the frequency matrix and likelihood probability for each feature. In this case, we have two features, CGPA and interactiveness. Let's first do for feature CGPA. As you observe that you have continuous values, different values. So it's a continuous attribute. First step, find mean mu and standard deviation for the job offer S. Yes. Let's first do for job offer S. Yes. So mu for CGPA, yes is add up all the CGPAs where the job offer is yes. So 9.5 plus 8.2 plus 8.4 plus 9.1 plus 9.6 plus 8.6 plus 8.3 divided by 7 because total yes is 7. So I am getting mu as 8.814286. Okay, now let's find the standard deviation. Okay. So, standard deviation is, let us find the standard deviation for CGPA, yes. So, what is the standard deviation formula? Square root of, right, the x value, that would be the CGPA value minus the mu mean value, the whole square divided by n minus 1. What is the general formula standard deviation is root of xi minus mu whole square divided by n minus 1 where xi is the attribute value of CGPA in this case, mu we have already found in the previous step, n is a total number, okay. Now, looking at this table, you have to do square root of 9.5. What is the mean that we found? 8.814286. So, just go on subtracting with minus 8.814286. So, 9.5 minus 8.4286 whole square plus 8.2 minus 8.14286 whole square plus 8.4 minus 8.14286 whole square plus 9.1 minus 8.14286 whole square plus 8.6 minus 8.14286 whole square plus 8.3 minus 8.14286 whole square divided by n minus 1. What is n? n is total number of s is what? 7. So, 7 minus 1. So, I am getting the standard deviation as 0.581486 okay now repeat that for job offer no so what is the mean value this is mu 
mu of CGPA no is how many no's I have just add them up and divide 9.3 plus 7.6 plus 7.5 divided by 3 okay that is your mean value for CGPA no find the standard deviation for CGPA no just do it in the same way root of 9.3 minus the mean of CGPA no the whole square plus 7.6 minus 8.13333 whole square plus 7.5 minus 8.13333 whole square divided by 3 minus 1 because total number of no is 3. So I am getting the standard deviation as this value. So now you find me you already now you have calculated mean and standard deviation for job offer yes and no. Now you have to find the likelihood probability. Now likelihood probability can be found using Gaussian distribution. Here is where most of the students are getting doubts. We, I will clear that in few minutes. Before that, let's go to the feature interactiveness. Now feature interactiveness, if you observe in the question, is a discrete value, right? Either you have yes or no, just two values. So first like, calculate the frequency matrix. Frequency matrix, write the interactiveness, the attribute in the first column, job offer yes in the second column, job offer no. Interactiveness will have two possible values, yes and no. So look at the input table. For interactiveness, yes, how many times you got job offer? No. Okay. So for interactiveness, yes, how many times you got job offer as yes? Sorry. 1, then 2, 3, 4, 5. So right here, 5. Next, for interactiveness, why? How many times you got job offer as no? Go to this. For interactiveness, yes. How many times you got job offer? No. Yes, yes, yes. See, there is one here, right? Just one. So that's why right here, one. Similarly, for interactiveness, no. How many times you got job offer? Yes. Interactiveness is no. Job offer is, is one. Interactiveness is no. Job offer is two. So two times you got it. Next, for interactiveness is no, job offer is no. Interactiveness is no, job offer is no, one, two. So two times you got, okay. Next, just add this up, five plus two is seven, one plus two is three, that's all. So this is our, okay, so this was our, is our frequency matrix, okay. Now you have to find the likelihood probability for interactiveness. So how do you find, write the interactiveness in the first column, job offer yes in the probability of job offer yes in second column, probability of job offer no in third column. For the, for the value yes, find the probability of interactiveness is yes given the job offer is yes. So how do you find this? You have to refer your frequency matrix for this. Frequency probability that interactiveness is yes and job offer is yes interactiveness is yes and job offer is yes is 5. So 5 divided by total instances is 7. So 5 by 7. Similarly for this probability that interactiveness is y but job offer is no. So come to this. Interactiveness is y, job offer no is yes, job offer is no. So 1 divided by 3. So that's why it's 1 divided by 3. Similarly find the probability that interactiveness is no given job offer is yes. So interactiveness is no, given job offer is, is, job offer is yes. So 2 divided by 7, 2 by 7. Again probability that both are no, both are no is this one, 2. So 2 divided by 3. So this is your likelihood probability. Now come to the step 3, this is where most of the students are as asking doubts. Now use the Bayes theorem to calculate the probability of all the hypotheses. Before that, let's consider the test data. Test data is given. Probability uh, test data is CGPA is, uh, sorry, CGPA is uh, 8.5 and interactiveness is Y. So for the hypothesis job offer, yes, we will do that first, okay. Now we have to compute the probability, right, for CGPA, compute the probability of CGPA is equal to 8.5 given the job offer, yes. For this, let's use a Gaussian distribution formula here where you have the doubt, okay. Now here, you are using the Gaussian distribution formula. So Gaussian distribution formula is probability for the test data, let's do it for CGPA is equal to 8.5. 
for the class job offer is yes see the formula is where this is where most of you are going wrong there was a minus in the previous video which was not clear so if you miss this your answer will be wrong okay so 1 by standard deviation into root of 2 pi into e power of minus of xk minus mu ij whole square divided by 2 into standard deviation now that if you substitute the value we since i am doing now for cgpa yes so 1 by standard deviation for cgpa s yes, into root of 2 pi into e power of minus of what is this this is our test data okay test data they have given cgpa is 8.5 minus what is this this is the mean for cgpa yes I found the mean for CGPA is from the first step 8.14286. I just took the first three values 8.814 whole square divided by 2 into standard deviation. Now, standard deviation for mu for which we found in the second step, right? For CGPA, that is this one which we found in the step 2 0.58146. I just took 0.581 whole square. Everything is correct. I think this is where most of the students would be going wrong. It's my mistake. It was not clear in the video. There is a minus here. If you calculate, do it carefully, definitely you will get the value of probability as 0.594. Do it carefully, you will get. I think this is where most of you would have gone wrong. Put minus here. Okay. Now you have got the probability you of for CGPA 8.5 for the job offer. Yes. Now what we will do, right, we will find the probability for job offer, yes, you are getting the job offer, let's find the probability that the student will get the job offer for the given test data. So here I am using the base theorem, what I am doing here, this is equal to probability of CGPA is equal to 8.5, job offer is yes, into probability of interactiveness is equal to yes, given the job offer is yes, into probability of job offer is equal to yes. Now, the first one is nothing but what I found using the Gaussian distribution just now. That is 0.594. Substitute that here into probability of interactiveness is equal to yes. Given the job offer is yes. So, that was what we did in the step 2. Probability that interactiveness is yes. Given the job offer is yes. So, this one. So, 5 divided by 7. That's all. Substitute 5 divided by 7 into what is the probability that job offer is yes if you look in the look into the first uh, input training data set i had totally seven y's seven yes out of total 10 right and therefore it is seven by 10 that's it number of instances that are yes is seven divided by total number of instances if you calculate you will get the probability as 0.297 mark this as one now we will repeat this for job offer no okay so again you have to find the apply the gaussian distribution probability right i am going to find the probability for cgpa is equal to 0.5 given the class that job offer is no 1 by standard deviation of cgpa no into root of 2 pi into e power of minus please don't forget this minus into 8.5 minus mu of cgpa no whole square divided by 2 into standard deviation of cgpa no whole square so, what did I get? Standard deviation of uh, CGPA no. We did that in the step 2. Go back, take the values. Go back to step 2. Yes, it's here. Step 2, I got the standard deviation as 1.011594. Substitute that here. 1.011594. I have just made it into 1.0116. I have rounded off the fourth one. Okay. Into root of 2 pi into e power of this is a step. This is a CGPA, the test data. Minus mu, mu for CGPA, no. We found out, right? In the step 2, 8.133333. So, I just take, took up to 3 values, 8.133 whole square divided by 2 into standard deviation. I took it as same thing. Whatever you take here, take the same thing here. 1.0116 whole square. So, if you calculate, definitely you should get 0.369 here. Okay. Cross check this. You will get. Don't forget the minus. Next, probability of job offer no for the given test data now is probability that CGPA is 8.5 given job offer no into probability that interactiveness is y. This is these two are the test data. Right? This is the test data for job offer no into probability of job offer no. Now, the first value is nothing but this one 0.369 into 
probability that interactiveness is yes given job offer is no go to the step b probability that interactiveness is yes and job offer no is 1 so 1 divided by total that is 3 so that's why 1 divided by 3 into probability of job offer no out of total 10 data instances we had no for 3 times so that was 3 divided by 10 you will get 0 0.0369 mark this as step 2 these two is only important okay now comes the final step where we have to go into we apply the maximum a posterior hypothesis i am just going to compare one and two whichever is maximum that would be this is the probability for getting the job offer so probability for getting the job offer for the given test data is 0.297 probability for not getting the job offer for the test data is 0 0.0369 which is more this is more right so that means student will get the job offer that is what we have to conclude in the fifth step so right here no, sorry fourth step so step four is use map map stands for maximum a posterior hypothesis where we classify the test object to the hypothesis with the highest probability compare one and two after that we, we can conclude that probability that job offer is equal to yes for the test data given test data has a highest probability of 0. Point, this is 0, 0. 0.297 hence test data is classified as job offer is equal to yes this is your final answer so the conclusion is the student will get the job offer the prediction is yes and the probability of getting the job is 0.297 that's the prediction thank you so much